Yeah, no, I'm going to give it to you there. Thanks for, for giving me the gap there. Okay, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, we'll see each other on the airwaves. Uh, Papa Alpha 3 FBX, Zulu Romeo 6 Tango Golf. 73, everybody. Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, in this video, we'll take a look at an amateur TV client application called Long Mind. Now, if I'm pronouncing that incorrect, then I do apologize. But for the sakes of this video, that's what I will call it. Now, what we saw at the start of this video was the Windows client software, which connects to a Raspberry Pi running the Longmind server software. A Minitune DAT TV receiver would then be plugged into the Raspberry Pi's USB port. Now, incidentally, the guy in the first video clip is the developer of Longmind Windows client, something that I didn't realize until I was watching back my recorded footage. So a big shout out to Tom ZR6TG from South Africa. Now you may be asking, why am I showing this software? Well, it's because out of all the applications that I've tried so far for receiving and decoding DAT TV transmissions from QO100, Longmind appears to be the most easiest and responsive to use. Now once configured and working, Longmind client shows a real-time spectrum view of the QO100 wideband transponder. If you see a signal appear, then you just click on it to change the tuner's frequency and receive symbol rate. The video and sound for that transmission should then start playing in the display window. Now another useful feature is the built-in BATC wideband chat window, which is used by others to provide signal reports or ask questions to the broadcaster. Other features include manual tune and auto tune. So if you want to direct dial the frequency, set the symbol rate, or even change the antenna port of the tuner, this can all be performed within the Longmind Windows client. Now information about the receive station is also shown on screen on the top left. Details such as symbol rate, lock frequency, mode, and even signal lever and MER data. A nice feature to help align your dish is enabled by clicking on the MER button. This brings up a large window with a MER figure. Now I use this to align my dish. I just tuned to the beacon frequency and then adjusted the dish until the MER value was the highest possible. Now Tom ZR6TJ has a website which details all the instructions you need to download and install the Longmind server software on your Raspberry Pi. It's easy to follow the step-by-step -step instructions that Tom's provided. Now let's take a look at how we set up the server side. Incidentally, I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 3B+, so it doesn't need to be the greatest Pi 4 to run. Also, this particular version of Longmind Server for the Pi is a specially adapted version to work with the Longmind client. So if you want to set this up, be sure to follow Tom's instructions. So first off, we need to download a specific Raspberry Pi OS image and then write this to the SD card. Here I'm using the official Raspberry Pi imaging program that is a free download from the Raspberry Pi website. I selected the legacy OS version as shown in Tom's instructions. Once the OS image has been downloaded and written to the SD card, I then pop the SD card into the Raspberry Pi. I connected an ethernet connection, plugged the mini tuner into the USB port and then applied power. You'll then need to SSH into the Pi. Now I myself use PuTTY for Windows as it's a free application and it works very well. Now once you have SSH access, you will now need to follow the rest of the steps within the instructions. These are quite easy to follow and are done by copying and pasting the commands from the website to the SSH terminal window. Now just wait for each command to finish before moving on to the next. Of course, you will need to make sure that your Pi is on a network which has internet enabled as these commands will download the required software and then install it. Once it's installed, you can either enter a command to start the Longmind server software manually, or you can create a service that will automatically start every time you power on the Pi. Now I opted to create the service so that I don't have to keep SSHing into the Pi to issue the start command. Now within the service, the main command line titled exec start includes two IP addresses. In fact, they are the same IP address, but can be entered twice on the same line. Now it is important to change this IP address to the IP address of the computer running the Longmind Windows client software. Once changed, save the service file, enter a couple more commands to start the service, 
and then reboot the Pi. With LongMind client software already running on my Windows computer, you'll notice it will now automatically connect to the Pi and allow you to choose a transmission from the spectrum at the bottom of the client software. The large hump on the left of the spectrum is the QO100 DATV beacon, which transmits 24-7 at a symbol rate of 1500. The higher the symbol rate, the wider the transmission will be, and in theory, the better quality the received video will also be. Amateurs can experiment with different symbol rates, which is why any transmission you see to the right of the beacon can vary in width. Some you may find that are very thin and others that are very wide or even as wide as the beacon. Now there are regular nets on QO100, so if you have a receiver capable of decoding 333k symbol rate, then why not tune in sometime? All you need to do is point the dish. ZA6 Yankee India for the group from ZA's one mic mic. Z is one mic mic, Z is six YI. <clears throat> it is indeed a riddle. All good fun and excellent signals from everybody. Benno, compliments. It's the best signal I've seen from you. Um, the audio is superb. Quality of the image, fantastic. And Mike as well. You know, Mike, I, I went onto a big screen and you had absolutely no plat uh at all. It, it or, you know, it was just a perfect signal, so uh, very well done. What I like about this software is that it's extremely quick to tune to another station. The video and audio quality is good, and the client software is very responsive and not at all laggy. Now, hopefully sometime soon, I will be transmitting my very first video to QO100, and of course, when that happens, I will create a video and show you the gear needed to get my images to space and back. If any of you guys are into digital amateur television and you use a different way of receiving pictures, then please let me know down in the comments below. This software doesn't strictly just work with QO100, but can be used on a whole range of different other frequencies. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.